I'm not even going to give you any notes for this because I think we already know how to solve these guys. We already know how to solve equations, right? Um, how do you get rid of something? You do the inverse operation. If there's a x plus 3 and you want to get rid of the plus 3, do a minus 3 to get rid of the plus 3. If you have an x squared and you don't, you don't want the square, you do the opposite of a square, which is a square root, right? Um, if you have x, like in this case, as a power, and you don't want it as a power, you have to undo the situation that makes it a power. So how do you undo an exponent? With the inverse of an exponent, what's the inverse of an exponent? The inverse of a square is a square root, but what's the inverse of an exponent situation? A log situation. So if you don't want the 3 to the x, if you don't want the x to be an exponent, you have to undo this exponent situation that has a base 3. So how do you undo an exponent situation with the base 3 with a log base 3? So you're simply going to do log base 3 here and log base 3 over here. That'll cancel it out. Your x is going to come down is greater than you're going to end up with log base 3 of 243. However, you can't just leave it like that. You want a decimal value. The instructions say to uh, round your answer to the nearest ten thousandths. So that's four decimal places. So um, if you have the Texas Instrument, so if you have uh, this Texas Instrument calculator, um, it only does common logs or natural logs. Okay, so it only has the log base ten or log base e. So if that's the case. You're going to have to apply the change of base formula. So on that little half sheet of paper uh, that I gave you the log properties on, I also down here gave you the change of base formula. And the change of base formula just says that you could take any logarithm with any base and change it to whatever base you want as long as you split it into two and make a fraction with the log base whatever you want up on top, log base whatever you want on the bottom. So how's that going to help us right here, especially if we have a calculator like this that only does common logs or natural logs. It doesn't do base 3. So what we're going to do is use a change of base formula where we take this guy and convert it into a fraction and you either want common log or ln. What do you guys want to do? ln or common log? It doesn't even matter. Common log. Common log? Okay. I, I like ln but let's go with common log. So you're going to do common log up on top, common log on the bottom. Common log means base 10, but ultimately that's just this log button right here, okay? Now, how does the formula work? The bigger number that's not the base, the bigger number goes up on top, and the smaller number that is the base goes on the bottom, but not as a base anymore, just as a regular number. So, x is greater than log base 3 of 243 is the same thing as this. x is greater than common log 243 over common log 3. So if you do use the calculator and type in common log 243 divided by, oh, I'm sorry, common log 243 close parenthesis and then divided by common log 3 close parenthesis hit equal, that'll be a decimal value. Okay, so you're actually going to type in common log 243 close parenthesis and then hit divided by common log 3 and then close parenthesis hit equal and that'll give you your actual decimal answer okay so if you have a Casio if you're lucky enough to grab a Casio give me a second If you're lucky to grab a Casio, then you have this button right here that will actually do the logarithm, any base, without having to change a base. So with the Casio, you could just type in that button, put the 3 in the base spot, put 243 in the other spot, and hit equal, and it'll give you your answer. So you're probably thinking, why the heck 
do I even want to know this uh, change of base formula? If the Casio, if the Casio could do it for me, I don't need to learn it. Well, the truth is you do need to know it. Like, check out this homework assignment down here at the bottom, number 19. It says express each logarithm in terms of common logarithms, okay? In terms of common logarithms. So they don't want base 3. They want you to change it to base 10, which is common log. So the change of base formula, like I said, is converting, making it into a fraction, and putting whatever log you want. It could be log base 3, log base 5, log base 10, log base E, log base happy face, as long as you do it both on top and bottom. So they want the common log, so I'm going to put common log up on top, common log on the bottom. What number goes up on top? 7. What number goes on the bottom? 3, but it's not a base anymore, it's a regular 3, and that's it. That's a change of base right there. So if they ask you to do this problem, you can't do it with the calculator. You have to know the change of base formula. Right? How about the next one, number 20, since we're on this already? Number 20, let's change that to common log. It would be common log of what up on top? 66. And common log of what on the bottom? There you go. That's it. It's easy. Might as well the next one here. Whoa. Come on. Next one. Uh, if they tell you to change the common log, what's going to be? Common log what? 35 over common log 2. Now, please don't confuse this with the quotient property. Okay, The quotient property is completely different. The quotient property is when you have like one single log of a fraction, and then you could change it to a, a subtraction of two logs. Right? So don't confuse that with the quotient property. This is just a change base formula. Um, let's jump back to the one we just did. Where is it at? Right here. You didn't have to change it to, uh, to common log. You could have changed it to ln if you wanted to. So you could have done ln, ln of 243 over ln of 3, and it would still give you the correct decimal answer or the correct answer, in this case, 5. If you did ln of 243 over ln of 3, it would still give you the correct answer, 5. So your final answer on this one is x is greater than 5. Number 16, you could apply logarithms here, or I, I see the 16 and I see the 4, and I know I could change them to be the same base, right? So you might as well do that. It's quicker, right? Um, I could change the 16 to become 4 squared, and it's still to the v power, and it's still less than or equal to, and I could change the one fourth to become four to the negative one power, right? You guys with me? Okay, so then you could apply log base four on both sides, which ultimately just causes the fours to cancel, but don't forget to multiply a power to a power, and that would cancel. If you want to show your work, go for it, write down log base four, so you can see how it cancels. Log base four, so you can see how it cancels. But the bottom line is you're going to end up with a simple inequality 2v is uh, less than or equal to negative 1. Which means that when you divide by 2 on both sides, you're going to have the answer v is less than or equal to negative 1 half. Could this have been done with the calculator? Absolutely. Right at the beginning, right at the beginning, you could have said, oh, I want to get rid of the base 16, make that v drop down. How can I get rid of this base 16? Apply what? apply a log what? Log base 16. So if you put a log base 16 right here, that'll cancel out as long as you do log base 16 over here. That's ugly. So you would really have, if you were to do it, if you wanted to do it with the calculator, you would have v is less than or equal to log base 16 of 1 fourth. You could actually type that into your Casio, log base 16, and then of and inside the parentheses right there you're going to put 1 divided by 4 and if you did it on the calculator it will give you negative half anyway negative 0.5 anyway cool on some of these you will not have a choice you have to use the calculators right so um, how would I get what's my first step here I want to solve for D D is an exponent I don't want it to be an exponent what am I gonna to have to apply to both sides log base 7.6 
So if I apply log base 7.6, it'll cancel out with that 7.6, and I'll have a new left side of the equation, d plus 3 equals, now on this side, it does not cancel. It does not cancel, so I need to rewrite this thing. It's going to be log base 7.6 of 57.2. Is that ugly? Heck yeah. But you don't have to worry about it. Why? Because the calculator does it for you, right? Now, let's, let's say that you weren't lucky enough to get the Casio. You need to use a change of base formula to do this on your Texas Instrument calculator, right? So let me act, I mean, this actually will become a fraction with the change of base formula. And this time, let me use the LN button, since all calculators have an LN button. Why do I keep drawing that? LN, L. N. Okay, LN on top, LN on the bottom. We have LN buttons on any calculator. It doesn't have to be a Casio. So what number goes up on top? 57.2. What number goes on the bottom? 7.6. Okay. So this is a decimal number that you will get by doing your, uh, your calculation on the calculator. And once you get a decimal number, you still have this part of your equation, D plus 3 equals that. Uh, decimal number. So what would your final step be? Your final step would be to subtract 3 here and subtract 3 over here. So subtract 3 here and subtract 3 over here. In other words, D is going to equal ln of 57.2 divided by ln of 7.6. Hit equal, then subtract 3 from it, and you'll have your final answer for D. So as you're typing this in, uh, of course, you didn't have to use LN. You could have used common log. There's a common log button. Here's the LN button. Uh, so you're going to hit LN. And notice that when you hit LN, the LN comes up, parentheses come up. Type in the 57.2. There it is. Now you have to close parentheses. So hit the close parentheses button. And then hit divided by. It'll give you that slash. And then type in LN again. And then do the same thing, 7.6. And then close the parentheses after the 7.6. And then I would hit equal, and then at the very end, subtract 3 from your answer. Yes, question. So if you do type in the second one, divided by, divided by ln of 7.6, uh, you can't see it right here on the screen, but hit equal, that'll be your answer. However, that's the answer to this. So the next thing to do would be able to hit, hit your minus sign on the calculator, and then 3, and then equal again. So when you hit your minus sign, it's going to appear as, a and S, that means that the previous answer, minus 3, and then you get your final answer. Let me show you. So when you hit minus, you should automatically get this answer, and then hit the 3 at the very end, hit equals, and you should get that final answer right there, negative 1.0048. Now it does say to the ten, ten thousandths, so yeah, it would be uh, 0048. This one doesn't change the 8 to a 9, so that's it. This would be your answer right there. And you can check it on the back of your worksheet. What do you guys think? Let's do 17 super quick. I want to apply a log base 42 on both sides. I know it's ugly. These guys cancel out. The x squared comes down. The equals comes down. The log base 42 of 84 comes down. Now, you want to solve for x. So we're going to have to get rid of that square. How would you get rid of a square? By applying a square root and applying a square root. Now remember, log base 42 of 84, that'll actually give you a decimal answer and you could take the square to that answer. Uh, always remember that whenever you apply a square root on an equation, your answer ends up being plus or minus. So uh, with the calculator, let's type it in. With the Casio, it's pretty easy because the Casio could do log base 42 of 84. Now let's say that we didn't have the Casio. Let's show our work here. How would we do this? This value right here, log base 42 of 84, you're going to change it to either common log or ln. So let me rewrite the equation. x squared equals, what do you guys want, common log or ln? ln? Ln. So we have ln of 84 over ln, ln of 42. And if you do this on your calculator, you're going to get a decimal answer. And then you're going to have to square root that decimal answer. Okay? Or you could already uh, do the square root first if you'd like. In other words, when you type in your square root, square root of what? And in parentheses, you'd have to do the ln of 84 over ln of 42. I would do the decimal first, and then I would use the answer option, which is on the negative symbol in your calculator, to uh, rewrite your answer into the square root. 
So by doing the ln of 84 over ln of 42, we get that nasty decimal. Now I'm just going to square root both sides, and I'll be done. Same answer.